match the two parts of the object, which we're looking at now as maybe two objects fusing together as they were molten coming down. But that's quite a revelation that uh, these spots match exactly the two parts, the two major uh, lobes of the object. We have to pursue <clears throat> the electromagnetic uh, emissions from this thing mm -hmm. to see what it's doing. This is, this, is, this is nothing that we have on this earth. On this earth, yeah. Now, when I visited with you in Laughlin, mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to talk about that in detail, um, it, it let me know that it responded to sound. Um, did you get any further with that at all? No, we haven't been able to do that. We haven't been able for one thing, for one thing, we have had five analysis performed on this thing, five major laboratories, mm -hmm. Los Alamos, New Mexico Tech, the National Institute for Discovery Science, um, University of Texas, and MIT. Mm -hmm. Five, oh, and the University of La Jolla, California. Mm -hmm. We've had six tests performed on this with six different conclusions. Mm -hmm. None of them agree. Yeah. Was somewhere, somewhere, I, and I don't know where I heard it, um, somewhere I heard that uh, someone had looked into that and where did I, I can't remember where I heard it, that it could also act as a transmitter. Is, is that pretty close to what I heard? Well, one of the tests, yes, one of the tests yeah. that we can perform on it here mm -hmm. that is very, very inexpensive, this, 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 doesn't, this isn't going to cost us anything, mm -hmm. is to take a, an AM band, mm -hmm. radio band, and tune it between stations. Mm -hmm. This was told to me by a, a very reputable scientist. Mm -hmm. So I did hear that. Yeah. yeah. And he, he, to, he told us if we will tune the uh, AM band mm -hmm. uh, between stations mm -hmm. and hold the object next to the band, if we get static, mm -hmm. then it is emitting uh, some electromagnetic forces. Yeah. So, now, 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 sometimes uh, when I listen to the radio, I can hear weather, like up to 300 miles away mm -hmm. uh, by static. Is that similar? Similar, yes. Uh, we, we have already done this Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, out in the laboratory, in, mm -hmm. our, in the back room, and we have gotten static. So we know that it's emitting something. Uh, something. There's two things here that, that uh, lead us to believe that it is emitting something because song, yeah. because it, 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 the, this is phenomenal the x-rays mm -hmm. dental x-rays should not be exposed just mm -hmm. from a piece of metal yeah. and these have been exposed yeah. there's other tests that have to be performed on this thing that unfortunately cost a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, going into a laboratory and the main thing is finding a scientist mm -hmm. who will perform these tests and stand behind what they find. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this, and it may not may not go over too well, but most scientists are cowards. Well, can you blame them, considering no. what you think you have there? No, because they're afraid that if they find something, mm -hmm. and they stand behind what they find, mm -hmm. they are going to lose their credibility. Credibility, yeah. Well, but this has happened over and over in history, mm -hmm. and uh, and then in the future, it, it, someone doubled back and realized the importance of them doing it anyway. What I can't understand is why so many people are afraid of the truth. I contacted Skeptic Magazine. Mm -hmm. I said, "Well, I'll 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 take another route." I, I can't find a scientist who will stand behind what he finds. Maybe I can contact Skeptic Magazine, since they have about 40 or 50 scientists on their staff, mm -hmm. and say, here's what I say I have. How about taking a piece of it and analyzing it and prove I don't have it? Uh, yeah, that's really, uh, yeah, that's really. <laughs> oh, they cool. won't do they it. They won't do it. <laughs> well, well, you know, we, we've kind of talked about, um, and here again, we'll go into that a little later here. Uh, most people that have something or know the truth, first of all, we have no funding and nobody wants to listen because, oh, it's just Bob White. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Isn't that's, that something? That's, that's unfortunate, but it's true. Yeah. Um, I possibly... Mm -hmm 
could be the only person in the world that has had a UFO encounter and has a piece of it. Wow. Did a sworn affidavit, passed a polygraph test by a 28-year police veteran, mm -hmm. and the public doesn't know about it. Yeah. Why? Because unfortunately, the only way I have to reach the public is through the news media, mm -hmm. mainstream news media, and they won't touch it. But you know, you have a long journey ahead of you, so you're probably going to live a long time. I've lived a long time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you told me you're 72. 72. Yeah. So, so and that's I, probably what. And I don't feel a, keep I you living. I listen. I don't feel a day over 68. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> I can. This is the introduction. Tell me when you're ready. Go ahead. So March. 26, 1931 was not a good year for anyone to be born. But ready or not, I came into this world. It was right at the end of the Great Depression. I was the fifth child in a family of six children. Jackson County, Missouri, or Dogpatch, as we who lived there called it, was a very poor country. Very poor county, I'm sorry. No indoor plumbing, electricity, sidewalk, sewer system, or water. Most kids quit school at an early age and got jobs. I was no exception. My father passed away when I was just 12 years old, and we all had to get jobs to make ends meet. I grew up fast, looked, and acted older than I was. At 16 years of age, I started playing guitar and singing in bars. Thus began a career in entertainment where I've been all my life. I wrote songs and performed in clubs all over the country. I've never had a hit song, but did make a very good living. I met Bill Chapman in Los Angeles, California, and we, we became the James Brothers. Bill and I were closer than real brothers, so if when I refer to him as my brother, you will know where I am coming from. All the events in my life I thought were pretty exciting. However, nothing can even come close to the experience you are about to read. The obstacles I have had to overcome could not have been possible without the help of my good friend, John Huey. John's my webmaster. You know, the thing is here, uh, I know people that start reading at page one, you know, at the, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And since I wrote, uh, it's so important that you read what the people say ahead of time or at the end, because that kind of gives you, yes. uh, you know, and um, I, I'm going to put that in here right now, because lots of times people chapter one and they disregard all that, yes. and then they're missing out almost the most important part of the whole book, the before and the after, and a lot of people don't know that. Let me think. I'm brain dead. We've been on the road since the, the 21st. Uh, I, I mentioned that here just to remind people. And I've never done a show in a TCTV shirt. That's what they look like. And I'm going to turn around here for you. That's what we look like in the back. And Got it. there you go. And it's been, it's been very helpful because we are very strange looking people traveling through the Bible Belt in the, <laughs> in the Midlands. So the TCTV show came in very handy. <laughs> it did. I thought when I opened the museum here uh -huh. that I was going to meet with a lot of opposition. Yeah. Not at all. The girl that was with us, her name's Catlin. And when she left us, we, um, we had her summarize her impressions and things, and one of the things she said was interesting. She said when she started that, she thought that maybe ever once in a while we would see a person, mm -hmm. but it was nine out of ten that approached us with stories. Mm -hmm. And so she said it was real, <coughs> she was overwhelmed with the people coming to us. So it's, you know, when people say, oh, I don't believe in this, and I want to say, who cares what you believe? It's not whether you believe it or not. That's how it is, you know. Why is everything based on a belief system? That's what it is. So who put the para in a normal? Who determines what's... I had, uh, first open the place, I had uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people uh, from religious Two organizations... Two minutes, okay. ...that came in mm -hmm. and right away uh, formed an opinion uh, that it was satanic. Mm -hmm. And when I found out that I believe that I that I am I, I, I firmly believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I believe in a supreme being. I believe in God. I used to be religious. I'm not religious anymore. Mm 
-hmm. I'm spiritual. Spiritual, yeah. We have I have a close relationship with the Father. Yeah. And uh, every day, my day begins and ends with God. The convention that I'm at. I'm at the convention, yes, over at Lot, the uh, Swingo. And, and, and tell me what you just said. Well, it's basically that when my thoughts of things, what could be and what is, it got into religion, but then you get into religion, or you find out you're arguing for 20 years about religion, and there's all so many religions that who is right and who's wrong. Then you get into the UFO stuff, the, the financials, and you've created 10,000 more questions to ask, and mm -hmm. you thought you were, you know, brain dead with the religion. <laughs> brain dead is going to work, yeah. You, yeah. And so then you get into this UFO stuff, and the more you get into it, you, real, you realize that you're coming to the same thing again, becoming brain dead. Because you got so much stuff that you cannot analyze it all, mm -hmm. and and then you got to figure out what's true and what isn't true, and there's so much, what I call uh, circus, into the UFO phenomenon that mm -hmm. they're giving your entertainment like wrestling or cartoons, or whatever, right. and not giving you the true information. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why I enjoy this gentleman here. Uh -huh. that, that, Dr. Jill, I guess his name is, yeah. is getting some of the raw material. Yeah. I had, have never met any of these uh, gentlemen, and so I thought it was a wonderful yeah. thing to look into. It's way past the 4th of July, however, some of the children in the neighborhood um, had firecrackers left over, so that's what you hear occasionally. Now, as you know, I mutilate names, and I keep calling it Reed Will. It's not. It is Reed Springs, Missouri. Uh, the web page that you can get to read Springs to if you don't want to drive in person would be www.heartevidence.com www.heartevidence.com or you can go to my web page. I'm going to give you the phone number uh, just in case you'd like to call there and to make sure I have it right you see here on my scratch paper it is 417-272-9620. 417-272-9620. And so come along and let's go down the hallways and then I'll probably see you a little later. There's some castings of Bigfoot footprints. The interesting thing about these, as you'll see in this picture right up here, is they can find dermal ridges that are very similar to fingerprints. Of the Code of Federal Regulations implemented on July 16th, 1969 makes it illegal for US citizens to have any contact with extraterrestrials or their vehicles. That does not include me because I am a registered alien. I met them actually and I can't remember mm -hmm. their name, isn't that horrible? Olivia and Natanya. Yeah. And they gave me an idea what I can do with all my scratchy footage. I'll put it behind you. There you go. <laughs> okay. So I went there. Mm -hmm. uh, my vice president and I. And we got this long road here, graph here, graph them. Just picture of the of the road. Mm -hmm. And it's all like sand. All the way out there. All the way back. There's miles to go back in there until you reach the signs that said deadly forces mm -hmm. authorized beyond this point. We stopped there of course. Well on the way back, uh Vice President was with me and he's a big fella and he drinks a lot of pop. A lot of soda, so he had to relieve himself. So we stopped in the middle of this road at this particular spot. I got out at one side, he got out on the driver's side, and I looked down at my feet, and there's this rock. Look at that rock closely. Looks like a brain. Look, look at it, you can see prints in it like tire tracks. I mean, it loved loves, like loves, mm -hmm. or tracks, yeah. And it was the only rock out there. In the middle of the road. Okay, and Monica? he looked all over trying to find another rock, <laughs> all the way back to the highway, and could not find another one. Now, Monica? What? We had a rock experience. We're going to put that in there. Hang on, let me turn on. Step back a little bit. Thank you. 
Yeah. We went to a weird site. We were in New Mexico at that lava 